God's Spirit. Much smaller crew today than we had last weekend. Did you turn that down just a little teeny bit? They don't need to hear my every breath. As in the tradition of Lutheran churches around the world, this day, All Saints Day, the first Sunday of November, we remember all those who entered, resurrected, and eternal life since last All Saints Sunday. All Saints Day reminds us the veil between us and the great cloud of witnesses is sometimes very thin. We remember that those who have gone before us are still very much with us in our memories, our laughter and tears, and in our DNA. We light the Christ candle today in remembrance of all the beloved saints in our lives, and we'll invite you to come up during the hymn of the day after communion and light a candle in remembrance of any loved ones that you have. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished their course of faith now find rest. We especially remember to you today Esther Eller and Frank Chalbert who passed on into eternal glory with you this past year. You swallow up death, wipe away tears, and comfort our aching hearts. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, receive perfect fulfillment in your everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uh, I'll have you, let you uh, have a look at our announcements. Today, is there any other announcements for the good of the group? Sure. We have hot off the press our Christmas CD. So I thought now that it's November, we can start talking about Christmas stuff. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so I have it back here, ten bucks, cash is good, or a check to Holy Book Hands. I will do it. All right. Thank, Thank you, you for that, Jeff. Uh, Christmas C CD is available now uh, at the office here for those of you online. I wanted to just share one other thing, um, not about church, but about somebody we all know and love. I heard from Iris Johnson this week, and she's doing just wonderful, you know, where she's living, you know, down in uh, the apartment living where she is. They haven't started, um, they haven't opened their big church yet because the big church is really large, but they do have the chapel going. So, of course, Iris had mentioned that uh, at one of the uh, services that, of course, she plays at, surprise, surprise, um, that the pastor had um, done a particular hymn or a particular sermon, so she had changed her hymn at the last minute. And uh, down there, the people hum along with her. And, of course, the song that she had changed it to was Jesus Loves You. And so everybody was so happy, they all clapped. And the, the minister thought it was was his sermon, and she thought it was perhaps the, uh, you know, the song that she closed with, but of course that was the iris, and I believe, somebody could correct me, I'm not really sure, is she like 96 or 97, still oh, no, playing, still cool. just a, just a, you know, a ball of fire that she always was, and uh, it's wonderful that uh, her life is going well down there. Thank you. Now join me for some opening words of faith this morning. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith our ancestors trusted in God's ways. By faith they waited for what was promised. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Lead us to Jesus, the pioneer and protector of our faith. We gather in this moment in communion with our God, and with love and encouragement of all who led the way. And join me for some opening words of confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, we confess that we have committed the same sins as our ancestors. We have ignored your ways and settled for empty words and actions. We have forgotten to love our neighbors. 
instead of taking advantage of systems of privilege and oppression for ourselves. We have failed to heed the warnings of the prophets of times past and present. But there is still time, O oh God. You know there is still time to turn back to you. There is still time to make reparations for the wrongs of the past and the present. There is still time to do justice and pursue peace. There is still time to forgive and seek reconciliation whenever possible. God, lead us into this time, a time of healing and hope, a time of restoration. Forgive us, restore us, and send us out to share the gospel, the good news of your love for the world. Amen. God's steadfast love endures forever. Through the scriptures, we know that God is always working for restoration, for reconciliation, for healing. Be part of that work. Seek God and forgive yourselves. Seek those you have wronged and begin the process of forgiveness and healing. Forgive those who have wronged you. Do the work of justice to dismantle the systems of sin that hold us all back. And know that God is with you in this holy work. You are loved, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, now go live out the good news. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear our gathering song. You may come along.
we have uh, we have joys and concerns this morning. Birthdays, anniversaries, prayer requests. Everybody's got a perfect life, huh? So it's glad. And Robbie and Ari. I have a joy. Uh, you maybe have seen it if you're a Facebook person. I've, uh, I, I finally have a closing date and time for my house, so uh, it didn't look like it last Friday. <laughs> on Friday, we were supposed to close on Thursday night, I guess. I put out a call to all the saints for prayers because we, uh, I had heard from the banker that uh, it didn't look good. We had we had changed a change in underwriters, and well, it just looked like everything was falling apart. And so we turned to God in the midst of that moment and uh, asked you all to pray, and prayers are answered. So I feel very, very thankful today. We'll continue our our service with our confession of our faith. I invite you to stand as you're able. <clears throat> Join as one body and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our petitions will end today with Lord in your mercy and response will be pure of faith. And let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray now for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their, their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O oh God, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of every nation, guide this country Rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. We pray that you rise up those leaders that will best serve your interests, God. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless, bless the work of all the conservationists, park rangers, natural wonders of the world you have made. Help them be preserved, Lord, and help us to take care of all you have entrusted us with. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. 
shape our vision of saints to match Christ's own vision. Awaken in us your call to serve all those who suffer. And we especially pray today for those that we lift now to you, those struggling with health issues, Lord, those with depression, those with seasonal disorders, those facing and coming from surgeries and recovery, those rehabbing from things, and Lord, those dealing with grief. We lift now to you our, our names that are before you and on our hearts today. We remember Esther and Rodney, Ozzy Ratzer, Carts, Mary, Riley Calvary, the Walter family as they deal with grief. And those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. of every time countless are the multitude you have called by name and gathered to yourself comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year in faith may we join them in ceaseless praise as they watch over us Lord in your mercy receive all our prayers now in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever Amen. So we have a little difference. I'm going to just uh, talk to you about the communion set up this day before we enter into the words of institution. Um, that your communion cup is, is complete, uh, enclosed. Uh, on the top, you'll find the wafer, and underneath, you'll find grape juice. And so you'll just have to peel back that little cellophane to, to get to that wafer, and then there'll be another little peeling that you'll do. And I uh, thought that would be more, more safe for you. So we'll get that ready. Yeah, I know, even uh, yeah, for us with older hands, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And so on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave her all to drink, saying this, Blood is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And remember us, Lord, into your kingdom and teach us to pray anew. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We will have our hymn of the day, Rocky Lakers, and you will be 
are invited to come up now to light those candles.
continue our service with the reading of the lesson. Our psalm today is Psalm 149. We will read it responsibly. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Where the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory, let them sing for joy on their couches. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To execute on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. today is from 1st Kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 24. It is much easier to talk about trust, confidence in God's goodness and provision in the face of despair and doubt than it is to live it. Elijah predicts a drought. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishba in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the Wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. But after a while, the wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. The widow of Zarephath. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Elijah revives the widow's son. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His, his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, 
O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May you say a word of prayer with me. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into our midst, into our homes, into our lives. Open our ears to hear with them. Open our minds to think through them. And open our hearts and plant your words deep within them. Enlighten us, empower us, and strengthen us. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Amen. So our first encounter with Elijah today in the Old Testament, and I have to admit I got kind of excited with this falling on All Saints Sunday because I feel like Elijah definitely one of those lives you could aspire to <laughs> because of his faith, his faith, and and. This first introduction, I think you have to think about everything around this to understand who Elijah is. He's a prophet in a tough time. Israel's monarchy has kind of slidden down from the time of David and Solomon now, and the kings, and we have a king that was known as probably one of the worst kings of Israel, Ahab. Ahab married Jezebel, a lot of people have heard about Jezebel. Jezebel, Ahab's marriage to Jezebel, though, was, was really bad. Jezebel brought her gods into Israel, and they put up her god's temple. And Jezebel's god was <coughs> Asherah and Baal. And Baal was a god of child sacrifice and that was not pleasing in the sight of the Lord no other gods right we've been talking about the Ten Commandments with the kids recently in confirmation talking about how integrity is so important about having no other gods or idols it's tough about honoring your father and mother and as always, you get a little pushback on that. You know, do we really have to? Um, always. And, and so when I think about what's happening here in Israel, Elijah is sent to Ahab with a message from God and, and obediently goes. Standing in front of a king and saying things they really don't want to hear is not you know, in your best interest generally. So, so Ahab, he tells Ahab, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. There won't be any dew until God allows it to rain again. I think it's kind of not surprising then that God says, you need to get out of town like now. So he sends them, sends him out. He said he sent him east of the Jordan, so that means he sent him out of King's Reach. Sent him across the Jordan River to a little place that you'll later come to know as Phoenicia in the days of Paul. So this was to a place in this area that was desert and this wadi you may think, what is a wadi? So that's where, kind of a wash area where all the water goes when it rains. 
and it pools. So in the desert, that's a good place to be, especially if there's a drought. If there's going to be any water there, it's going to be there for quite a while because maybe it's pooled quite a bit. So he stayed there as long as he could, we heard, in hiding, basically, because nobody's going to look for him in the middle of the desert, in the middle of a drought. And then the water ran out. And God directed him then to go to this widow. And I just picture this interaction kind of like, what are you doing? And she's picking up sticks and, and then saying, do you have any food for me? Can you make me a little, a little cake? And you heard the answer, you know, it's, it's our last meal. I can't imagine being in that boat. The last meal. We're going to eat this and we're going to die. Basically, we think we're going to starve to death. And he, he reassures her because God has said, this is the one. He said, no, you know, take heart. Go back to your, go back to your house and make me a little cake and then make one for you and your son. You'll have enough. And I think in these days and times, sometimes we think that we don't have enough. And, and, I, and so that kind of, that just stuck with me when I read that this week. You will have enough, more than you think. Sometimes I think when we give, we think we won't have enough if we give extravagantly or if we give generously. But I think, you know, when we think about that, and she says, okay, <laughs> surprisingly. I might have said, take a hike, buddy. <laughs> this is my last meal, you know. <laughs> the human side of us wants to go there, kind of. Uh, I don't think that, that, you know, that is always our first response to, sure, come on home. You know, scary looking guy from the desert, come on home with us. So there's a lesson to be learned in that about hospitality, right? <laughs> hospitality and being safe, of course, at the same time. But then it sounds like things went pretty well for a while. He hung out. He stayed. He hung out there for a while. They had many meals, it says. Then her son got sick. And she thought... I certainly must have offended this man of God. That was her reaction. What have I done to you? And then, of course, Elijah asked God, why are you doing this to this woman? You know, why are you, why are you killing her son? Uh, and so I think sometimes we talked about, this is a little bit of wrapping together some thoughts that we've been talking about the last few weeks about trusting God when sometimes things happen you didn't ask for. <laughs> and also uh, being willing to speak up and say to God, this is how I really am and it's not so great, you know. So, so he takes the boy, it said, to the upper room and he breathes on him. After he talks to God, And, and so one of the things you should think about this widow, you know, she has an upstairs. That means she wasn't necessarily in bad shape before the, before the drought. Uh, but now her food's run out. So you generally don't have an upstairs unless you're doing pretty well in those times. And also being a woman alone, that also shows that she was a woman of means maybe. But she couldn't solve this problem. And so there's two things going on here today that I want you to take away that are really important. Because you might think, why is this so important? It's Old Testament. But Elijah, Elijah's learning three things that are super important right now. Three lessons. You know, doing what God tells you to do. <laughs> Trusting God in the midst of not always seeing that things are going to work out. 
and just being faithful to continue. And the reason this is happening, this is why I was excited, because my favorite sermon was preached last year about Elijah. He calls down fire off the mountain in front of the 400 prophets of Baal and shows them who really is God. And that takes a lot of faith in your God, a lot of trust that God's going to do what he needs to do. <laughs> but he didn't have that at the beginning here. He had to go through some stuff. <laughs> and sometimes you got to go through some stuff to get to where you trust God completely or as much as you can in a moment. Where you will be obedient even if it doesn't make sense sometimes. Even if you're not sure you're going to have enough, you're going to trust. And I think the other part of it is, you know, on the widow's side, that you open your heart to possibilities you didn't consider. Because sometimes you don't know what's going to come up the road towards you. And sometimes you don't know that that's your very resurrection moment that's happening for you. So, so those things are really important, I think. And I, and I think about the things that, that we do every day. And, and uh, I was thinking a little bit about how it's kind of like in basketball, you learn how to pivot. You think that it's not so important, but that pivot can be really important because you turn your focus fully somewhere else. And it only takes a little turn, but you pivot and you pivot. And they have you practice that. And you think, why am I practicing this? It's so you can get your focus where it needs to be. And so I think in this moment, God's asking this widow as, as crisis strikes them uh, in the midst of goodness, you know, where can you turn your attention? And then Elijah as well. You're going to trust me. Kind of asked you a couple weeks ago, are you going to trust him? And and I'm not just talking out of my out of my ears here. I'm living it myself because I've had to trust God a lot in the last few weeks, a lot more than I ever thought that I would. And 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 it might not sound like it's that big of a deal, but it has been because it really changed you when you when you know that no matter what it's in God's hands there's nothing you're going to be able to do and so I, I know this is for someone today God wants some time and space with your problem whatever it might be whatever it is that you're wrestling with he's asking you to pivot a little bit and to say here Take this to the upper room. And I can't imagine as a mother, as a parent, and I've been with parents waiting outside the emergency room door, not able to be with their child in the midst of a crisis, but I haven't experienced it myself, so I can't imagine waiting as he takes this boy to the upper room. You wait here. I think there was a lot of pacing. A lot of thought, maybe, to a God she never considered believing in. Because she was from Phoenicia. She didn't believe in God. But she'd been with this prophet. And she was starting to believe. And I think a long time ago, my best friend said to me, one of the most important things you can do in your ministry is leave space. Leave space for God to do his work. And that's hard for me because I like to talk. You guys know that. But leave space for God to do his thing. And I have to say it makes sense now. It didn't make sense then. It makes sense now. God needs space to deal with your problem today. God needs space to deal with. Maybe it's not a problem, but it's just something you're wrestling with, with your faith or your, your life or whatever. Take 
hands off and watch what God will do. And the power of prayer, I don't always put my personal life out there for the entire world to see on Facebook. It's tough for me. But, but I reached out to every group that I belonged to and said, hey, let's pray together. That is the power of prayer sometimes. You need to feel that lift from your, from your, fellow, your fellow believers. Your community of saints, you know, that's how we support one another. And that's where I talked about saying, I'm fine. I say it too. Sometimes I just don't want to tell you everything that's happening. But sometimes, sometimes I need to tell you so you can see the glory of God. Because God does answer prayers every single day. And God still does resurrection every single day. I can tell you in 2006, I experienced a resurrection like I never imagined. And some of you have those stories in your life too. So the message today is, is to believe that God may be, this is not your best days. Your best days are not over. Maybe you haven't had your pinnacle moment yet. Maybe God's trying to get your attention, saying, you need to pivot a little bit. I need your focus here. Things are a little blurry here, but if you pivot, it's all going to become clear. So I encourage you to listen. Look for those moments. Think about the ways and the little things. It's the little things that you do. Sometimes it's a little thing that you do for one person. Changes their life. Leads them into that resurrection moment in their life. And maybe you never see it, but it happens. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these opportunities to revisit your goodness, your mercy, in the midst of the pages of the Old Testament, Lord, that lead us into the gift of your grace, for that, that mercy that never runs out through Jesus Christ. Help us to give you space this week. Help us to give, give you our problems, our dilemmas, our joys and concerns. And help us to share that great good news of prayers answered, lives reborn, refocused, repurposed. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for the sending blessing and our closing hymn. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. The Lord look upon you with favor, granting you always his peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn.
good news. Have fun doing it. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a great week. God loves you and so do I. Thank you for being here today with us. And uh, hope to see you again next week. Thank you for your faithful giving. Yeah.